Hebrews 13 and 8 says, Jesus Christ, the same yesterday, today and forevermore. The musician was playing, great is our faithfulness. We are about to leave the year 2021 and enter into 2022. And the same God that's been with us every day of our lives is here right now. And he's already over in 2022, making a way out of nowhere. So we have a right to praise him tonight. Just the fact that we are here tonight is a reason for us to praise the Lord. 2021 was a mean year, but God brought us, and we're here right now. So we're here to praise and magnify the name of the Lord. We're going to praise this old year out and praise a new year in. And every time you have a new year, you have a new possibility. Every time you have a new year, you have trouble in that year, but you also have promise in that year. So I'm looking forward to what God is going to do in the year 2022. Amen. As we are going into that, we are so thankful that God has brought us through and bringing us through to 21 into 22 as Pastor has shared with us. And you know, when we think about that, you know, who brought us? Who's going to carry us? We don't know what the future holds, but we know who holds the future. Amen. And with that kind of a statement, I believe if we all, wherever we are, whenever we're watching this, if we will just think and concentrate on trusting in God. And will you join in with me as we sing that I will trust in the Lord. Amen. I will trust in Yeah. Uh -huh. 
our Father, which art in heaven, the giver of life to us and the sustainer of life for us. Master, once more again in life, we, a few of your believing children, are assembled here at this appointed place at this appointed time. Lord, you know all about everything. Lord, you know why we're here. You know what we're doing, and you know everything that we're trying to do. Lord, as we are here, Master, as we are celebrating that God, you've been good to us. But Lord, when 2021 started out, Lord, the virus was running rampant. Lord, all the different things that was going on with all the political situations. But God, we knew and just trusting in you, Lord. Yeah, just yeah. trusting and holding on to your unchanging hand. Lord, knowing that you go take care of your people. And Lord, you didn't leave the, the nations. You didn't leave the planet down into the politician. But Lord, you left it down into your believing children's hand. Yeah, into the yeah. church's hand. Mm -hmm. And God, we just want to thank you for bringing us thus far. Yeah. Lord, realizing as we say, Master, we did not bring ourselves, and Lord, nor were we so holy, nor did we keep your commandments so well. But God, you being a loving God, a merciful God, a kind God that looked beyond all of our faults, and Lord, you saw our needs, and God, you had compassion on us. And Lord, we say thank you. Lord, we're asking you, Master, to please bless this church. Lord, bless St. James. But, Lord, not only St. James, but God bless every church door that's opened up in your name. Wherever the church is, Lord, and no matter what, but God bless the church. Yeah, yeah. For, Lord, your word teaches us, Master. For, Lord, you had declared that, Lord, that the harvest was plentiful, yeah. but the labor is a few. God, we ask you to please, Lord, use us, Master. Mm -hmm. Use all of us as your laborers that we can do the, your mission that you've called upon us to do. Yeah. Lord, for when we look and we think about Lord, we think about what you told Peter. Lord, you told Peter to feed his sheep, yeah. and to feed your sheep. And, Lord, that's what we're trying to do. Lord, we're just trying to get the word out, Master, about a dead, buried, and risen Savior. One that loved mankind so much that he left glory. Mm -hmm. That came down to this sin cuss world. Yeah. Walked around here 33 and a half years. Did not sin. Became the perfect sacrifice for us mm -hmm. to, so that you could be the one that, that we as human beings, we as mankind, could have a right to go back to a holy God. A right to call upon mm -hmm. a holy God. And just just as you had declared that we must do it through you, Master, because no man can come to the Father but by you. Right. Lord, as we are here and as we are assembled, Master, we're asking, Lord, if there's someone that does not know you in the pardon of their sin. Lord, let them know that they should not go into 2022 without a yeah. Savior, Master. Yeah. Lord, let them know that you're in a saving business, Master, mm -hmm. that you can save right now because, God, we know that you are on time right now, God. Mm -hmm. You're not limited like mankind because, God, you are everywhere at the same time. Mm -hmm. If we just whisper the prayer and, Lord, and believe in our heart, Lord, your word teaches us that we shall be saved. Mm -hmm. God, help us, Master. Mm -hmm. Lord, we ask a special blessing on the pastor of this church. Lord, enable him to stand and to preach a bold gospel. One about a dead, buried, and risen Savior. One that can save anyone. And Lord, not only blessing the pastor here, but every pastor, every minister of the gospel everywhere. Lord, you've already equipped them to do the mission that you've called upon them to do. Lord, enable them to continue on the battlefield. Lord, the choir that's in the choir stand. God, you know all about them. Lord, they come from many different homes. Lord, having many different minds. But, God, we can all get on that one accord yeah. to sing yeah. those Zion songs and, Lord, lifting you up through, through song and through prayer and music, Lord. Yeah. Lord, bless us. And, Lord, as we look, Master, we have some sick among us. Yeah. God, you know everything. God, we don't have to call out any names. We're so glad we serve a God that is all-knowing. Yeah. God, we can whisper and we can think about them and concentrate. And God, you see, you hear, and you know. Mm -hmm. God, bless them. God, enable them to get up off of their bed of affliction. Lord, enable them to continue in the ministry in which you've called them to do. And Lord, I said ministry because all of us are ministers, Lord. For we all are the ones that's going out and sharing and being a servant for you, Master. Now, Lord, we have some bereaved. For Lord, as we know that in, as 2021 started, 
And Lord, as we're continuing on here to the end of 2021, Lord, there have been many who have passed away. Yeah. God, you know every situation. Lord, you know the broken hearts. Lord, you know the empty places mm -hmm. that are at the tables. You know the empty places that are in the homes. But God, we know that you are a loving God. Yeah. For Lord, your word teaches us, Master, you are a mother for the motherless, mm -hmm. a father for the fatherless. Mm -hmm. And Lord, even though, Master, some have been called home, mothers, fathers, sisters, brothers, cousins, nieces, aunts, Whatever the situation is, God, you can fill the void. Yeah. And God, as you have declared with the comforter, Lord, comfort as only you can. Mm -hmm. Comfort and heal and prop up as only you can. For Lord, we know that you have not made a mistake, but God, it hurts us. We just clay vessels. Yeah. Lord, it hurts our hearts when, when the situation occurs. And Lord, we find out about it. And God, sometimes we don't know which way we're going to turn. We don't know what to do. But God, we're so glad that we know about our Savior. Yeah. We know that he is a man that has walked on this earth. He has seen trouble. He has seen death. And Lord, we know that he is the resurrection. Yeah. For Lord, just as surely as he rose up Lazarus, Lord, we know that those who, who go to sleep in you, Lord, they are there with you. And Lord, and you, your word teaches us what to comfort one another with the words that we're not like those who are hopeless. For Lord, yeah. we have yeah. a hope in our Savior. And God, we thank you. And God, we thank you for being God all by yourself. We thank you for loving us so much so. And Lord, as we continue and go into 2022, God, we thank you. Yeah. And God, we're trusting in you. And Lord, we're leaning and depending on you. That everything that we shall do, Lord, we're asking you to please touch, bless, and heal as only you can. And God, we'll be careful to give you all the honor and all the glory. In your son, Jesus the Christ's name, we all pray. Amen. Amen. We're grateful we are on tonight to give God praise, glory, and honor. Come on, clap your hands like this. We're so glad that trouble don't last always. As we look back over 2021, we can testify that God has kept us. I'm so glad, say I'm so glad. Yes, I am. Troubles don't last always. I'm so glad. I'm so glad. Troubles don't last. Come on, grab one more time. I'm so glad. Put your hands together and say, Trouble don't last. You want him, but he's on time. On time. In the time of trouble, I found him to be a friend of mine. that knows every one of our burdens he'll help you to bear I'm so glad put your hands together and say troubles don't last troubles don't last I'm so glad yes I am trouble don't He'll help you, he'll help you, he'll 
help you to bear. season to be blessed God made your promise you stood to test windows of heaven pour you out a blessing it's your season to be blessed it's your season it's your season to be blessed, God made your promise. You stood the test. Windows of heaven, pour you out a blessing. It's your season to be blessed. I'm blessing the city, I'm blessing the field. I'm blessed going out and I'm blessed coming in. He's going to open up window, pour you out a blessing. It's your season to be blessed. It's your season. It's your season to be blessed. God made your promise, you stood the test, windows of heaven, pour you out a blessing, it's your season to be blessed. I've been through the fire, 
I've been through the flood, but I'm standing here just because of his blood. He's going to open up window, pour you out a blessing. It's your season to be blessed. It's your season. It's your season to be blessed. God made your promise. You stood the test. Windows of heaven pour you out a blessing. It's your season. 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 You don't have to throw in the towel. Every day gonna be Sunday. The Sabbath will have no end. Oh, it's your season. 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 To be blessed. Every time God makes a promise, we can claim it if we have faith in God. God promised he'll never leave us, Thanks, nor will he forsake us. He said, Lord, I'm with you always, even to the end of the world. And I don't know about you, but I claim every word of that. Because I know I can't keep myself. Amen. But God has brought us all the way to the end of 2021. Amen. We ought to have a praise on our lips tonight. Amen. Giving God the glory for holding us in his hands. Amen protecting us from hurt, harm, and danger. So many times there were dangers around us that we didn't yeah. even know about. Yeah. But God protected us. Thank you, Lord. So I don't know about you, but I came to praise him tonight. Yeah. Go with me tonight to Isaiah, the 43rd chapter of Isaiah. And we're going to start reading at verse 15. Isaiah 43 and 15, read. I am the Lord, your Holy One, the Creator of Israel, your King. Thus saith the Lord that maketh a way in the sea and a path in the mighty waters, which bringeth forth chariots and horse, the army and the power. They shall lie down together, and they shall not rise. They are extinct. They are quenched as tow. Remember not the former things, neither consider the things of old. Behold, I will do a new thing. Now it shall spring forth. Shall you not know it? I will make a way in the wilderness and a river in the desert. Right. Verse 19 again. Behold, I will do a new thing. Mm -hmm. Now it shall spring forth. Shall you not know it? I will make a way in the wilderness mm -hmm. and a river in the desert. Right. A few minutes I want us to consider <laughs> it's not over. Right. It's not over. Amen. If we would take a real good look at our world today. We would easily see that we're living in a very desperate time in the history of the world. The gas prices are going through the roof. Food prices are increasing. We have floods, fires, tornadoes, and earthquakes being caused all over 
the world in various places. We are having to deal with various destruction. We've had to deal with this COVID virus that seemed like it has no end. People are losing their homes and the essential workers are being stretched beyond their abilities. Amen. Overall, if you look at our world with our earthly eyes, the times that we're living in right now are bad. It seems like everything is spiraling completely out of control. We're constantly witnessing a few evil police officers using their power to destroy our young people. Oh, we have one standard of education in one area and quite another one in other areas, such as it was with the children of Israel. They were Abraham's seed. They were God's chosen people. They had been blessed to move into houses they didn't have to build. And they were able to enjoy vineyards they didn't have to plant. God gave them a land that flowed with milk and honey. Every enemy they had to face. They were able to defeat because God fought for them. But after the battles had been won, after the land had been divided and after they had settled in their new land, they started turning their backs on the Lord. Amen. In a time of peace, they forgot about the God that delivered them from their Egyptian bondage. Yes, in their prosperity, they forgot about the God who won all the battles that they had to face over their enemies. They forgot about the God that allowed them to possess the promised land. Yes. God sent his prophets to warn his people about the consequences of their disobedient behavior. But they refused to repent. Now they're in bondage in Babylon. Their day in the sunshine has now passed away. They moved from enjoying the promised land to being servants in a foreign land. It was bad for the children of Israel. It got so bad until the prophet Jeremiah assessed the situation, and he said, for the hurt of my people, I am hurt. I am black, and astonishment, astonishment has taken a hold of me. He asked a question, is there no balm in Gilead? Is there no physician there? Why then have, is not the health of the daughters of my people recovered? Israel is in a very desperate situation. They were about to lose all their hope of ever seeing the sun shine again. Jeremiah kept on talking. He said, oh, that my head were water and my eyes a fountain of tear. I would weep day and night for the daughters of my people. Israel was in a bad condition. Well, I've been in the Cumberland Presbyterian Church in America all of my life. I was born in this church. I was converted in this church. I served as a deacon and an elder in our church. I'm now serving as a pastor in our church. Today I'm hearing more complaints over the condition of our church than any other time in the history of the church. I'm hearing about churches in our denomination that are dying. I'm hearing about pastors and elders fighting one another. Every time I turn around, I'm hearing more and more bad news about our church and the churches in other denominations also. If all I had was my physical eyesight, I'd be just like Jeremiah. I would wonder, is there no bomb in Gilead? Is there no physician there? Well, today, through the prophet Isaiah, God is promising an answer to Israel's dilemma. Listen to what he has to say. He said, I am the Lord, your Holy One, the creator of Israel, your king. Somehow Israel forgot their relationship with the Lord. Church, we're not careful. We can get so busy trying to run the church until we can forget about the God of the church. 
Oh, we can make ourselves so important until we can make God insignificant to us. We need to go back to the, putting God at the head of the church. We got to remember the mission that he left for us to perform. God reminded Israel that how he delivered them by parting the waters of the Red Sea and allowing them to cross over on dry land. He reminded them in the scripture of how he destroyed their enemies in the same sea. We just can't forget the victories that God has already given us. He told them that, I know you're crying right now. I know the days have gotten mighty long. I know all your hope is about to be depleted. But I want you to know that I can see better than you can see. I know it looks right bad right now. But I want to tell you that it's not over. I don't want you to remember the former things. I don't want you to consider the things of old. Behold, I'm about to do a brand new thing. Behold, it shall spring forth. I am God. I can make a river in the desert. I can provide you water in the wilderness. Today I want us to look at God through the God that can bring us through any situation we find ourselves in. If we look at the world through our physical eyes, the world looks bad to us. But I have some good news for us as we go into this new year. It might look bad to us, but the good news is it really doesn't matter how bad it looks. It's not over. God is still our God. There was a time when he, he'd have to allow us to suffer. Sometimes he had to remind us that he alone is God. There are times when he has to uncloud our vision to see who he really is. We can't afford to forget who God is. God has brought us from a mighty long way. It was a time when we as a people didn't have any rights at all in this world. Back then, we were considered as cattle or hogs or something. Our ancestors still were able to steal away in the middle of the night and praise the name of the Lord. There was a time when on Sunday morning we couldn't have service without having a white man present to monitor what we had to say. Back then, we had shacks for our churches. During that time, we were still able to give God the glory that he deserved. There was a time when we suffered all week long, trying to survive in this world with no laws to protect us. We can't forget about where God has brought us from. Oh, we live in Alabama, the place where they turn police dogs on us. The place where we had to battle the fire hoses. God has brought us from a mighty long way. Back then, I believe we were closer to God and closer to one another than we are today. God has blessed us in so many ways. But it seemed like we turned our backs on the Lord. We're trusting in our jobs more than our God. We're depending on our, on our education more than the God that gave us the mind to complete our degrees. We feel like we're crafty enough to have things our own way. We act like we don't need God anymore. Sometimes I believe we worship God with our lips. But our hearts are far from the Lord. God has said those that he loves, he'll chastise. I just believe we're going through a time of chastisement. I believe that God is telling us that we are not serving him like we need to. It's time for us to repent and come back to the Lord with our whole heart. The Bible tells me if we confess our sin, God is faithful and he is just to forgive us of all our sins. And then he'll cleanse us of all our unrighteousness. I know we didn't want to hear a message like that, but I'm God's mailman. I have to deliver what he put on my heart. I want you to know that it's bad right now, but God is telling us tonight that it's not over. God is able to make a river in the desert. God specializes in restoration. There's no situation that's so bad that God can't turn it around. There was a widow from Nain. She lost her only son. Back then, a widow's son 
was her only source of support. I can see her in my mind, walking with her head down in a funeral procession. When she ran in to the King of Kings, Jesus Christ stopped the funeral procession. He touched the coffin and restored the widow's son back to her. It was a bad time for the widow. But when she met Jesus, she found out it was not over. God is able to turn her situation around. One day there was a multitude of people who had patiently given their attention to Jesus Christ as he talked all day long. Jesus Christ didn't want to send them away hungry. He had compassion on them. The disciples said, you ought to tell them to go on and find food for themselves. But Jesus told him, go around and survey the crowd and see if you can find some food. They told Jesus when they came back to him, all we found was a lad's lunch, two fish and five loaves of bread. Yeah. Jesus Christ told him to have him to sit down in companies of 50. And Jesus started breaking the bread, and he started breaking the fish. And when he got through breaking the bread and breaking the fish, Jesus was able to feed 5,000 men, not counting women and children. It was bad for the crowd that day. But because Jesus Christ is over the fish and the bread, it was not over. All we have to do is put our trust in the Lord. God is able to turn gross darkness into light. God is able to provide for us when we have no bread on our table. There were two sisters that loved Jesus with all their heart. Mary and Martha made a petition to Jesus Christ. He, they sent a messenger and told Jesus, the one that you love is sick unto death. Jesus Christ didn't get in a hurry to come to their rescue. Have you ever called on the Lord and kept on calling on the Lord and it seemed like he wasn't listening to you? Jesus Christ didn't hurry to their rescue. Finally, he made it to Bethany. And the two sisters were mourning over the depth of their brother. They came to Jesus and they told Jesus, we told you our brother was sick. We just don't understand why you didn't come and heal our brother. Jesus told him, evidently, you don't know who I am. I am the resurrection and the life. He that believe in me, though they are dead, yes, shall they live. He that live and believe in me shall never die. Jesus Christ saw the sorrow on their face. And the Bible tells me Jesus wept. Jesus got to the grave of Lazarus. And he told him, show me, show me where you laid him down. Show me where you lost hope. Show me where you laid him down. When Jesus got to the grave of Lazarus, he looked up to heaven. He told the Lord, I know, I know, I know that you always heard me pray. But for the benefit of those who don't believe, let Lazarus come forth. He started calling on Lazarus. Lazarus came. Out of the grave with his grave clothes on. Jesus told him, loose the man and set him free. God is able. Do you know he's able? God is able. Yes, he's able. God is able. Yes, he's able. Well, we were all just like Lazarus. We were headed toward destruction. We had no hope in sight. We didn't have any way. We could save ourselves. We all inherited the sin of our first father, Adam. David said, I was conceived in sin. I was shapen in iniquity. The Bible tells me we've all sinned and come short of the glory of God. 
Isaiah said, Oh, we like sheep have gone astray. We have all turned to our own way. We were in a bad condition. God had every reason to destroy us, but justice was crying out, put the death sentence on them. They are no good. You ought to destroy every one of them. But mercy, I thank God that mercy said no. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believe in him should not perish but shall have everlasting life. It was bad for us. But because of Jesus' love for us, it was not over. I thank God. I thank God for his love toward us. In God's love is justification. We couldn't stand before a holy God on our own. But because Jesus shed his blood, I'm justified to stand before a holy God. I thank God. I thank God for his love toward me because God gave me his only begotten son. I've been redeemed. I was sold out to sin. Sin was my master and I was it slave. I was in a bad condition but because of Jesus Christ it was not over. He redeemed me from my sin. Do you thank God for his love because of the love of the Lord. I am adopted as one of his sons. Paul tell me in the fullness of time God sent forth his son made a woman made under the law to redeem them who were under the law that we might receive the adoption of son. I thank God. I thank God that God loved me with all his heart. We're about to cross over on 2022. I thank God for bringing me through January. I thank God for bringing me through February. I thank God for bringing me through March. I thank God for bringing me through April. I thank God for bringing me through May. I thank God. I thank God for bringing me through June. I thank God. I thank God for bringing me through July. I thank God. I thank God for bringing me through August. I thank God. I thank God for bringing me through September. I thank God. I thank God for bringing me through October. I thank God. I thank God for bringing me through November. I thank God. I thank God. I'm about to cross over in 2022. I just don't know what's over there, but I have a God. I have a God already over there making a way out of no way. I may never get to January, but I know, 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 I have a home on the other side. When the earth house of this tabernacle shall be the law, I have another building, house of God, not made with air. It's eternal in the heaven. One of these days, I'm going to see Jesus. Do you know him? Do you really know him? Is he real? Is he real? Is he real in your life? I'm standing here right now because of the love of the Lord. I just don't know why he loved me so much. But I thank God, thank God that he does. Woke me up this morning, started me out. Another day journey been with me all day long. Thank the Lord. I was riding up and down the dangerous highway. Cars in every lane. God kept the cars from running into me. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. 
Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Got to the church. Church was still standing. Thank you, Lord. We have a right. We have a right to praise the Lord everywhere that we go. We ought to have praises. God has brought us into 2022. I remember 1999. Everybody was talking about Y2K. Everything was going to go crazy. I remember going to watch night service at my dad's church. He had some elders that were crazy enough to go out in the parking lot like something was, was going to happen that night. Walking around scared. God didn't leave this world in the hands of man. And he said, no man knows that the day or the hour I'm coming back. They thought the computers were going to go, were going to go crazy. Everything was going to be destroyed because it, we were crossing over in 2020. And 22 years later, we're still here. Don't you know we ought to be praising God? Man makes his predictions, but God just sit back and laugh at them. Right now, they, they just launched another telescope in the sky trying to find out how the earth got started. I want to tell them all you got to do is open the Bible. It's been documented. You're not going to ever find out any more than what God will allow you to find out. We got to know that God is in control. We got to be sensitive to what's going on in the world. But we don't, we don't have to be afraid. Because I'm God's child. Now if you're not saved, if you don't know for a fact that you're saved, you need to be afraid. But if you know for sure if you didn't just join the church, but you got born again, what do you mean by being born again? I just told you in the message that because of Adam, we all lost our everlasting life. Adam sinned and we died spiritually. God's relationship with man was breached because Adam sinned. And then sin passed down to us from Adam. The two boys were offered sacrifices and Cain killed Abel. So sin was in the world then. The world got so bad until God had to destroy the world. The only people that was, were saved was Noah and his family. So, we were born in sin. But Jesus came to change our DNA. The first father, Adam, messed up. But the second Adam, Jesus Christ. We sinned in the flesh. So we had to have another person in the flesh to pay the price. And no one could qualify. It had to be a lamb without a spot or a blemish. Every person that you, you can bring them to me from the Bible. You'll see where they sin somewhere. But God provided us a lamb before the foundation of the world. We just got through celebrating the Christmas holiday. God sent his son into the world. He was all God and he was all man. He was our brother. And he was tried and he was tempted just like we are. But he passed every test. He never sinned. And then he offered himself. Don't get confused. They didn't kill Jesus. Jesus said, no man has taken my life. I'm laying it down. Love made Jesus allow them to nail nails on his hand. Don't you know he had enough power to call legions of angels to destroy every enemy that he has? He didn't, he didn't cease to be God when he was here. He just set aside his power for a minute. But Jesus allowed him to nail nails in his hand. Jesus allowed him to put spikes in his feet, put a crown of thorn on his head because he loves us. And after he fulfilled the last prophecy that was made about him, he said, it is finished. 
And then he decided to die. He had to die to buy our pardon. And then we had one more enemy. Death had been our enemy. Everybody died with the exception of a few. But Jesus defeated death. And he was able to look back and say, oh, death, where is your sting? Oh, grave, where is your victory? Because I'm in Jesus Christ, I'm not going to die. I'm going to transition. This body is going back to the dust from which it came. But my whole, my whole spirit and soul is going back to God. And one day he's coming back and he's going to resurrect that old body and change it in a moment and in the twinkling of an eye. If you don't belong to the, those who have accepted Jesus Christ, it would be a good way for you to bring in the new year. You can have a brand new relationship with God. Right now, you're dead. You don't know it, but you're not living. You haven't started living until you accept Jesus Christ as your personal Savior. I want you to know it's good to know him. I wouldn't want to live in this world without having God in my life. Jesus Christ came that you might have life and have it more abundantly. He come to, to give you life more abundantly. Satan has been robbing you all your life. He's been stealing all your joy away from you. I don't like a thief. You got to walk away from Satan and give your life to the Lord. Maybe you were watching the football game and you decided to look at your tablet or your cell phone and you scroll across and you saw this man preaching and something touched your heart. I tell you, God can save you right where you are. God loves you. The whole world might tell you you're no good. But God loved you so much until he gave his son. God loved you so much until Jesus gave his life to save you. When he died on the cross, your sins were on Jesus. But you have to claim what he did for you. It won't do you any good unless you accept him. A, a person can offer you all kind of gifts. But until you receive it, it won't do you any good. Where the best gift that you could ever receive was everlasting life. There are only two places you can go from here. Everlasting life or everlasting damnation out of the presence of God. If I were you, I would accept Jesus Christ into my life. I would just tell the Lord, I don't know what I'm doing, but I just believe that what that man said, if I give my life to you, that you'll accept me. So I'm turning my life over to you. God will save you right where you are. And then he'll start changing you. For the rest of your life, he will empower you to walk away from some of the evil things that you've done in the past. I want to tell you, you can be saved tonight and then find you a Bible-believing church. God loves you. He want to change your life. The rest of your life can be totally different. Will you come today? Will you please come? God is standing without stretched arms. Maybe you walked away from the church, but you decided you would listen to this sermon because you don't have to go to church because you're ashamed to go to church because you know you've been living a rough life. The prodigal son messed up and he ended up in a pole pen, but he came back home. And his father was waiting on him in the street to restore him. God is waiting for you to come on back home and give your life to him. He'll celebrate if you come back home. Man may never accept you. Man may talk about you. But God loves you. And he has some Christians that love you also. Just because a few people might talk about you. Doesn't mean everybody's going to turn their back on you. God still have servants that are living for him. Come on back home. May God bless you and keep you.
appropriate song. We just crossed over in 2022. We have a right to praise and magnify his great name. We ought to be grateful for allowing us to see a brand new year. This is pre-recorded, but I'm, I'm living as if it is already 2022. God, I'm claiming it. We're going to make it together into a brand new year. We thank God for keeping us. And ordinarily, when we had our church open before the pandemic, we would come down to the altar and we would rededicate ourselves. We're going to postpone that to Sunday morning when we are together. And we're going to rededicate ourselves, make a new commitment to God to try to live closer to him. We don't have to wait until Sunday morning to do that. You can make that commitment yourself. It's, it's personal. Even though we're going to do it together on Sunday morning. But you can make a commitment every day of your life that, Lord, I need you to help me to get closer to you. If you try to do it on your own power, you're going to fail. But God will enable you to do it if, if you would just put yourself in his hands and ask him for strength. Let us stand. We thank the choir for being faithful to sing through this pandemic. Let's give them a hand. They've been singing every Sunday morning, and we thank God for you. Holy and everlasting Father, Lord, we thank you for bringing us throughout 2021, Father. The pandemic was raging, Father. Lord, hatred was all in the land, Father. But Lord, you protected us, Father. We thank you, Father. Lord, as we move into a brand new year, Father, Lord, I know that there's trouble out there, Father. But Lord, you're already there, Father. And Lord, you promised that many are the afflictions of the righteous, but you've already delivered us out of every one of them, Father. So Lord, even when we face our difficulties, help us to keep our faith in you, Father. And Lord, I know that you have some victories out there for us also. Lord, we claim in the victories, Father. Lord, help us to, to, to go into new territory, Father. Lord, we're praying, Father, that you would help us to lead those who are following behind us, Father. I know you see our young people, Father. Enable us to get out of the way, Father, and, and put them in front, Father, and help them along the way, Father. And Lord, we're praying, Father, for those who have not committed their lives to you yet, Father. Lord, stir their hearts, Father. Stir their minds, Father. And Lord, we are able to say thank you, Father, for keeping us, Father. We're able to say thank you, Father, for allowing us to walk on new territory, Father. And Lord, we ask you, Father, to help us to be sensitive to how you're moving at this time in the history of the world. Now may the grace of God and the sweet communion of his holy presence rest root and abide with us, henceforth now and forever. Let every heart say,